Welcome back everyone. We got another new model for you. This is our Thunder 255 MTS. This is a direct replacement for the MTS 251. Uh, so this is brand new unit, um, an update from the 251. Um, obviously going to the LCD screen, it shares the same menu as the new Cyclones, the 263 uh, PI and the 253 DPI, 353 DPI. So we, we've got a continuity for all of the menus now. This one's no different, so it's got the same style of updated menu. Um, with this unit, kind of the same uh, features as the other, you know, MIGs. So we've got our Argon CO2 mixes. Uh, we've got our 100% CO2. This unit, being that it is a replacement for the 251 SI, it is a pulse MIG unit. <clears throat> so it does have a synergic pulse. Uh, we also have our aluminum settings for MIG, stainless steel, Flux cord with no gas, so just regular flux core. Flux core with gas, of course, that's dual shield. Then we have DC TIG, and this is where this thing has really had some major updates as far as the programming goes from the previous generation. So our same menu, while we're here, we'll just take a look at it real quick. So you can see here we do have pulse, and this machine, unlike the 263 PI and the 253 DPI, uh, this machine is a high-frequency DC TIG machine. So it's DC only, but it is high-frequency DC TIG. So if we come over here, we drop down on our menu. We can go to our pulse setting. If we go to turn the pulse on, we actually have DC pulse wave shape. So pretty advanced on the DC pulse side. So we've got square, sine, triangle pulse. So we'll just set it for square for now. Of course, we've got full pulse adjustment. So we've got our pulse frequency. So we can go down as low as half a hertz all the way up to this thing will really scream at 500 hertz DC pulse. Of course, your pulse time on and your background amps all adjustable. And then you've got on the other side, of course, we got our start amps, you know, typical DC TIG stuff, post flow, pre flow. And then we can drop down. We can adjust whether we're doing a, a high frequency or high voltage start. We can do lift start, we can do live lift, which is where you don't have to use a remote. You can come down, touch the tungsten. Your pre-flow starts. As soon as you lift up, the arc starts. So instead of having, like on the regular lift start, where we still have to use like the finger trigger or a pedal to start the arc, the live lift, the torch is always hot and you just touch down and go. So super nice feature there, of course. We can do pedal, we can do 2T, 4T, and so that'll be, so your 2T, 2T, 4T, and then 4T and 2T plus A, that's going to be like the amp control torch. But of course, we can just go regular pedal. So just your standard DC, so super powerful on the DC TIG, on the DC TIG side. Of course, we've got our, our DC stick. You know, full feature there too, hot start. You can even select the rod type. So this machine will run 6010. It runs 6010 extremely well. You can even set it up to run a remote. So if you did want to run, let's say like a finger trigger or a pedal, something like that, there is a little Easter egg built into it. We can dive into that into a later video. This one, we're just going to kind of do a, an overview, kind of show you what this machine has to offer. Um, so rod type, hot start, you can actually set your hot start timing and arc force. So just like the, the previous model, this is just digitized. Of course, we've got power set even on the stick side. And then one of the updates to the new like cyclone style menu is as we are adjusting up and down our graph, we get way off, you know, way off to the side in one of the extremes, high or low. The indicator goes red. As we start coming back towards the center, it goes yellow. And then kind of like our Goldilocks zone, it'll be green as we get closer to the uh, what power set considers the ideal setting for your rod type and your material thickness. Let's go ahead and jump on back over to the pulse side. So going to the LCD uh, has really made the pulse setup a lot easier. So with the previous 251, it was pretty much a manual pulse. Uh, you had to set up everything by yourself. Uh, we had some guidelines, but if you didn't know what you were doing with Pulse, it's extremely difficult to set up or to set up and get running right. So 
On this machine, we've gone through and, and recalibrated the whole pulse mode. So we can drop down here, of course, set our pre-flow, set our post-flow, burn back inductance. We can drop down, we can set our wire type. We go, or wire diameter, and then we can go to our wire type. So we've got all our aluminum wires, basic steels, and then stainless steel wires as well. So as we roll through our wire types, <clears throat> that's, ca that's calibrating the machine to that specific wire. So the power set mode has got a lot more powerful being able to go to LCD. We can offer a lot more options to get you a lot more dialed in on a particular wire, whether it's 4043, 4047, 5356. Uh, being able to select that exact wire, it calibrates the machine differently for that pulse mode. So it makes it a, a whole lot more accurate, a lot easier to use than the, uh, the previous models. All right, so let's go back. We'll go out of power set mode. Let's go over to something pretty standard. So Argon CO2, like you're running short circuit hardwire. So previously we had the zero through nine programs. Obviously, if you didn't know exactly what that program was saved for, you might've liked it on eighth inch, um, but you don't remember it was for eighth inch. So one of the things we've done now, if you just do a quick press, we have this recall. So you can see we have point 125 steel. I've already got that program saved in there. So we could go down and select that. That'll pull up that eighth inch steel program that I liked. So now if we want to write a new custom program, we press and hold for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Instead of recall, it says save. And you can see we have these locked and unlocked tabs over here. So let's say we want to go down to, let's just do number one. Go to number one, it's unlocked. We can lock it by pressing the power set button. That will not allow us to select it and change it. So we unlock it, select it, that opens up our keyboard. So now we can go in and we can actually scroll through with the right knob and we select with the left knob. So let's say we're gonna do, we're gonna name this one steel. I'll come down and go a space, come back up, put a decimal, and let's say this program, for whatever reason, was gonna be for a quarter inch. So we'll put in 0 0.250. We can just keep scrolling all the way down. So after we leave space, it'll go up to our save. We hit save, and now our number one program is steel 0.25. We can go ahead and lock that. I'm gonna lock this one so no one else can come in here and mess with it. So now we have custom named programs. So when you do set up, like say, 3 16 aluminum uh, pulse, you can save that as a pulse aluminum, you know, 3 16 um, Makes it a lot easier to keep track of your programming and know what each program is actually for instead of having to keep a little cheat sheet or a, you know, a Sharpie chart inside the door it'll be a lot easier to keep track of those. I don't know if you could hear it on the camera too, but this actually has a two speed fan. So right now it's just at its resting state. So the fan's running at a low speed. And then as we start an arc, we have a secondary fan that kicks on and the fans ramp up. So it's a lot quieter machine when it's just at rest. Um, but as we start to weld, the fans kick up and make sure it keeps the machine cool. So trying to address a lot of the complaints we've had over the years, whether it's, you know, the fans are too loud on the machine. So we're putting in either fan on demand or a low speed, high speed fan. And then of course the, uh, the program save we just went through. So trying to make the machines uh, better fit the consumers based on what you guys are telling us. So Thunder 255 MTS, uh, super powerful little DC only machine. Like I said, we were talking about that Easter egg on the DC stick. So let's go ahead and go over there. Let me get set up real quick, and then we will show you what that's all about. All right, so we're on the DC stick side. We have our remote on. So we, we're showing 10 amps. We can't adjust our amperage because we have it set for remote. So let's go. So I can actually pulse my amperage with the foot pedal. 
So I can go up. Now I can taper way back down. So, a little Easter egg for you guys. It's, uh, it can be useful if you're dealing with, like, let's say, some fixed steel plate. It's got a gap, and then it kind of narrows up, so you can kind of go lower amperage and then roll into it. Uh, so if you've got a variant, you know, a variance in your, your fit up, you know, something that might help you guys out. Kind of a, one of those things we could do it, so why not? So I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the video on the 255 MTS. Uh, we're going to have a lot more content with this machine coming real soon. Some other real cool little uh, tips and tricks with it. So see you guys soon. Check out the Thunder 255 MTS.